a professor of a large math class uses sampling to determine if grades get curved or not. Curving occurs if the population mean of the grading distribution is not equal to 75. A random sample of 225 grades has a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 20. Set up the corresponding hypothesis test at a 5% level significance and interpret the results. Now, what's happening with a hypothesis test? Very crudely, we're going to have a hypothesis or an educated guess at the value of the unknown population mean, mu. We're going to take that mean, set up the sampling distribution of the mean, then we're going to take a random sample, compute the mean, and then we're going to see how that mean compares to the distribution. So that'll give us an idea of whether our guess at the unknown population mean is in the ballpark or not. Our first step is to set up the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. In our case, we're testing the statement that the unknown population mean mu is equal to 75. So the null hypothesis is always going to be our educated guess at the unknown population mean. So null hypothesis is mu equal to 75. Now, sometimes you'll see that written with inequalities, but really you should save them for the alternative hypothesis. Now, to get our alternative hypothesis, we have to note whether we're using a one-tail or a two-tail test. Here, the professor is going to curve if he believes the unknown population mean mu is greater than or less than 75. So here, we're going to have two tails. That means my alternative hypothesis is going to be mu not equal to 75. If we were using one tail, the alternative hypothesis would have an inequality in it. Now, our next step is to set up the sampling distribution for the mean. For this, we're going to assume that the unknown population mean is equal to 75. Then what we'll do, we set up two regions, the acceptance region for the null hypothesis and the rejection region. To get the acceptance region, we're just going to take the symmetric interval about our mean, and then this interval is going to be such that the area above is 0.95. So it's our 95% level of confidence or 5% level of significance. Then we draw a random sample, take the mean for the random sample, and then we see which interval it falls in. So if it falls in the acceptance region, the conclusion is that we accept the null hypothesis at our 5% level of significance. If not, we reject it at 5% level of significance. Final thing to note, okay, type 1 errors. So what our 5% level of significance says, okay, there's a 5% chance of making a type 1 error. A type 1 error is just where the null hypothesis is true, but your conclusion is to reject it. So here we're measuring the chance of a false negative. Let's look at our sampling distribution for the mean. N is equal to 225, that's greater than or equal to 30. So our distribution is almost normal. The way we'll perform our test, we're going to use the standard normal distribution. We're going to take our sample mean, we'll find its Z value, and then that's the number we test with. Now, to get that Z value, what do we need? I need the mean. That's going to be equal to our population mean, and by assumption that's 75. We need the standard deviation, and is large enough so that the population standard deviation is approximated by the sample standard deviation. We take that number, divide by the square root of the sample size. That's going to give me 4 thirds. Finally, our sample mean is equal to 70. So now we can find its z value. That's going to be 
x bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation. So it's gonna give me a minus 3.75. That's the number we use for our test. The next step, we set up our acceptance and rejection regions for the null hypothesis. In our case, we have a 95% level of confidence so that means the area above our acceptance region is going to be 0.95. We have the standard normal distribution. So that means we're going to use as z values for the endpoints, 1.96 and minus 1.96. So we have area 0 0.025 in each tail. So we have the acceptance region between our endpoints. The rejection region is everything else. We perform our test, z is equal to minus 3.75. That falls in the rejection region. So our conclusion is we reject the null hypothesis that mu is equal to 75. And we accept the alternative hypothesis that mu is not equal to 75 at a 5% level of significance. That means the professor is going to curve the grades. Now, the 5% level of significance, just recall, that's the percent chance of making a type one error. So that means the null hypothesis is true, but we reject it anyway. But note in this case, we don't know whether it's true or not. Okay, we would actually have to go back, and compute the mean for the population. 